At the end of the Vietnam War, Saigon was forced into a historic evacuation as the North Vietnamese army descended upon the city. Among the countless stories of heroism and bravery, this photo remains a moving record of what a man is willing to do for his family. Taken by a sailor aboard the USS Kirk, the image depicts the cinematic escape of a desperate and loving South Vietnamese father willing to do anything to keep his family safe, even destroying a CH-47 Chinook in the process. On April 30, 1975, Saigon, the capital of South Vietnam, fell to the North Vietnamese Army. By then, Operation Frequent Wind, an attempt to save as many at-risk South Vietnamese as possible, was well underway. However, thousands of civilians and army personnel were still in great danger. If captured, they faced execution or being sent to brutal work camps. The city's Tan Son Nat airport was attacked. With its runway and facilities destroyed, escape by plane became impossible. There was only one way out of the city, a helicopter. Ba Van Nguyen was a major in the South Vietnamese Air Force who lived in the Saigon suburbs with his wife and three children. When the North Vietnamese took over, his family was one of the many desperate citizens with no access to a visa since none of them spoke English. On the morning of April 30th, Major Nguyen knew they'd never be able to reach any of the American evacuation points in time to escape. They lived too far away and there was a lot of traffic. Nguyen was desperate, but he had a plan. Steal a CH-47 Chinook. This was the largest helicopter in the South Vietnamese Air Force and had a distinctive noise that could be heard from miles away. The man drove his young family to his mother-in-law's house and told his wife, no, to pack only the essentials. Nguyen said to her that he was coming back soon and, quote, if you hear a Chinook coming, get ready. Miki, Nguyen's oldest son, could hear the machine guns and the screaming missiles as the North Vietnamese army drew closer to his home, but he said, quote, I knew my dad was coming. The Wynn family heard the Chinook the next morning. The family and a few neighbors climbed into the helicopter. Major Wynn mentioned that he saw American helicopters heading out into the sea and concluded that they had to be landing somewhere in the ocean. Wynn steered the helicopter to the South China Sea, just as a blinking red light appeared on the dashboard, indicating that the aircraft was running out of fuel. Floating in the South China Sea, Operation Specialist James Bongard was aboard the USS Kirk when the radar began picking up erratic blips, moving all over the place. He was bewildered. But Air Warfare No. 3, Donald Cox, knew precisely what was happening. The USS Kirk was on a mission to protect the American evacuation from North Vietnamese aircraft. He knew the blips had to be from a South Vietnamese aircraft, otherwise the contact would have been shot by then. One of his sailors spoke basic Vietnamese, and after he spoke through the radio, they heard Wynn's frantic pleas, quote, I must land or crash into the sea. Please help us. Cox complied. But the USS Kirk had a small landing dock, and it was already filled with choppers that had brought in refugees. It also had an anti-skid surface, and the giant Chinook had rubber landing pads. If it landed incorrectly, the helicopter's rotors could destroy the ship's upper portion and harm the passengers. Landing safely was not going to be an easy task. Wynn had an idea. He stuck his head out of the chopper and managed to tell the American soldiers with hand signs that he was going to hover over the deck and make his family jump out of the Chinook. Through hand signs, he urged the men to catch his family. Dozens of sailors ran to the rear deck while Major Wynn steadied the helicopter about 12 feet off the moving ship's deck. The Chinook had to stay still. Too high, and his passenger's fall could be fatal. Too low, and the USS Kirk could get hit by the chopper's rotors. Women and children were the first to jump. Wynn's wife grabbed their 10-month-old daughter, extended her arms, and dropped her to the sailors before jumping as well. Luckily, no one was injured. Wynn was now the only person in the Chinook. But a question remained. How could he get on the Kirk and get rid of the 12-ton helicopter? The pilot decided to attempt a ditch at sea. The man flew the helicopter away from the Kirk and hovered for about 10 minutes, 
dipping the wheels in and out of the water. While still piloting the aircraft, he slowly took off his armor, clothes, shoes, and gun. Then, in a swift maneuver, he veered the helicopter to the right and jumped into the ocean. He tried to stay underwater for as long as possible to avoid exploding shrapnel and moving rotors. The Chinook turned over, hovering near Wind's diving spot before slamming back down into the water with its wheels pointing skyward. Everybody went silent. A bright red liquid floated to the surface. No one could see the man. Then one of the sailors spotted a bobbing head on the surface. Wynn was alive. The red liquid was only hydraulic fluid. The crew and civilians aboard the USS Kirk exploded with applause, whistles, cheers, and tears. Wynn was rescued, and he immediately wanted to be reunited with his family. The USS Kirk crew would eventually save 30,000 South Vietnamese refugees. Wynn and his family moved to Seattle to begin a new life, where they learned English and he worked as a technician with Boeing. In 2010, 35 years after the dramatic rescue, the USS Kirk's former crew and the Wynn family met again in a tearful reunion. <laughs>